Senator Barb Goodwin. Defending and working for you. Sometimes you just have to do the right thing. And folks, if you have, like one of our staff does, a, a child that has diabetes, you're going to be paying huge deductibles before your health insurance is going to pay for anything. Um, this isn't a, a, a this isn't a, a plan that that anybody should have. I understand some private firms have gone to this plan, and those those employees have next to nothing for health care. In reality, uh, there's not good oversight at all on our contracting system. So we got billions of dollars that, that are going out, out to uh, private firms and that that are not um, very well audited. The other thing is, is that we talk about integrity in the system. Well, Minnesota actually has uh, a system that has a lot of integrity. Um, North Dakota doesn't even ask for voter registration if we're going to start comparing states. But here's what we have in Minnesota. We have vo voter registration. We have a registration oath. We have verification of newly registered voters. We have a statewide voter database. We have postal verification cards. We also have Minnesota Department of Corrections data. We have an election day oath. We have transparency on election day. We have post-election review of voters, transparency after election day, and investigations by county attorneys. Those 11 things we currently have already to make sure that we have integrity in the system. I, I think, Senator Senjum, your comments about the daycare providers are wonderful and about how important they are and about that kind of thing. But I think when we show that that an occupation that makes this little money that they make for the important and hard work that they do, um, and we have cuts to their budget and no increases for 10 years or whatever it's been, I, I think it's kind of, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit untruthful to say that we respect them that much if we would make cuts to their, um, the daycare providers when even in very, these very difficult budget times. Quite frankly, I'm being asked to vote on, 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 on the potential of convicting somebody of a felony, and I'm going to understand what I'm voting on. I'm not going to go to the tapes in HHS. This bill is before us, and it's before us now. So I, when, when I ask questions, I, I expect my questions to be answered. And with this uh, new information, it casts a very different light on the bill that Senator Hoffman had heard last year. And when we find out that Minnesota is one of the loosest states in the nation for giving guns back to convicted uh, violent offenders, then I do believe that's something that should be discussed in committee before it goes to the floor. We don't want people to tell us how to run our private lives. What I don't understand is why we want to tell other people how to run their private lives. Nobody's marriage affects me except for my own. Um, I might worry about my kids and their marriages, you know, if. Uh, if they had bad ones, which they don't, but I would worry about it, but it still doesn't affect me personally. And I don't think that uh, we need to worry about things that don't affect us personally. The argument that Senator Limmer continues to make is that this should be um, for the people to decide. Well, I don't like mixing my, um, my, uh, uh, government and religious views, but I do have to say this one thing. Think about how different Christianity would be if Jesus would have asked the angry crowd to vote on whether or not to stone Mary Magdalene. Think about how different Christianity would be. Sometimes you just have to do the right thing. And if people want to worry about other people's marriages or relationships, then I think they need other things to do. But for them to say, but for them to say um, that they should be able to vote on other people's marriages that has nothing to do with them is really not appropriate. Thank you. Senator Barb Goodwin, defending and working for you.